Today, we're gonna to talk about what tools you need to start as an apprentice electrician. So the first thing you need is a set of drills. The cool thing is that you can get a combo set. This comes uh, with a uh, impact driver. It's got multiple different speed and torque settings. And this is a regular drill, but it has a hammer drill setting. So sometimes you want to drill things. You want something lightweight that you can carry on. You know, you're putting plugs and switches and stuff like that. It doesn't weigh a lot, but you also want the torque and the hammering behind this impact driver. Other times you're boring holes and you need a uh, you know, high speed or you're going to be drilling into masonry like you know, concrete like this. Um, so you're going to want something that can go through masonry as well. So two different drills. If you only had one and you could only afford one, I would say just go with the impact. Um, this is a good starter drill and let your journeyman have to go through all of the different, you know, heavier duty or stuff. But if you can get them both, you'll use them both. Next up, every electrician needs a tape measure. And the type of tape measure you get is really, really important. Most people can get by with just any old tape measure, but electricians need wide tape measures. So you can see how wide the track is on this thing. And the reason is, is like if we're measuring something, we need to be able to pull this tape out and measure really far away, especially over our heads. Like we'll be climbing up on ladders and we need to measure lighting up above our head, up on the ladder. So we need something that's not gonna break. And the cool thing is, is when you stretch this out, this has got like a really long break to it. Most tape measures don't have that. What I also like about this is that it's got a magnetic tip. So you can actually see on the tip of this thing that it's magnetic, it'll stick to metal. So if you're in a commercial environment, instead of in wood studs like this, if you've got metal studs everywhere, you can stick this thing up to something metal and it'll hang up there. So it's not gonna fall. So having a magnetic tip, just a, a personal choice. Some people love them, some people hate them. Um, but I also find it really helpful to find something that has measurements on the, the front and the back because a lot of times you're gonna be below or above. Um, so anyways, get yourself a good wide tape measure that has a long break on it. I think this has got like a 13 foot break. It's also a 25 foot tape measure. So don't get like a 16 foot or a 12 foot tape measure. You're gonna be measuring long distances. Very often you're gonna be measuring things that are like 20, 22 feet, something like that. You could get a 30, but then it starts getting bulkier. So I don't think that's quite necessary. I like the hand size of the 25, it's perfect. All right, next up, the often most used electrician's tool out in the market is a stripper. You gotta have a wire stripper. There's tons of different types of these. Some of them are really small. Uh, they fit in your hand. Some of them are a lot bigger. Um, most of them will do common sizes like 12 gauge, 14 gauge, 16 gauge, stuff like that. Some of them will have bigger holes. Some of them will have smaller. But if you can do anything from like 10 to 20, you're fine. Most of the time electricians are using number 10, number 12, number 14, that's about it. So uh, what I like about a set of strippers is you notice there's little holes here and these holes are what you bend your wire with, but also these have little threaded holes so you can cut bolts. You can thread an actual number six or a number eight bolt, which we use all the time as electricians. You thread it in there, cut it, and then unthread it and it doesn't uh, muck up the ends of your thread. It actually gives you a perfectly threaded cut bolt. So these are really handy. I use the crap out of these. You will definitely need one. Next thing electricians use like crazy is the lineman's pliers. So these are actually high leverage lineman's pliers. They have a long handle, which is good because when you go to cut wire, uh, you want longer handles because it's if you don't have long handles, it's gonna be really hard to cut through wire. Some of the wire we cut is really, really uh, thick. So um, you want something with longer handles so you can really cut down on something and it doesn't kill your hand. These actually have a little crimping tool on the inside and they've got this little uh, cleated grip on the inside of here. So it helps if you grab on things and you wanna pull with this tool, you can. Uh, but not just a, a set of a normal set of pliers. This is a lineman's pliers. All right, next up is going to be the diagonal cutting pliers. So diagonal cutters um, are pretty much just a snip tool. Uh, it's just a, a large uh, cutting edge. You could use this to like ream out the end of conduit. It's got this nice cleated outside. So sometimes I will use that for like half inch or three quarter conduit just to make sure that it's smooth. Um, but this a lot of times you'll use for prying things too. So um, if we have like, uh, a staple or something that's driven in, you can actually grab on and you can pry it out with this tool. So uh, this thing comes in really handy. You can cut staples, you can cut nails, you can cut wire, you can do all kinds of stuff. You can kind of pinch into different things, but it's a really handy tool. You're gonna use the crap out of these. So make sure you have a diagonal cutting pliers. Next up is going to be a needle nose. 
pliers. Uh, needle nose pliers, you're gonna be able to fit into really tight spaces. So if you have a box and you need to get really far into, inside of something, helps when you're grabbing wire, when you're trying to pull things into really weird environments. Um, sometimes even just bending wires and trying to work in fine places, that's what you're gonna use these for. So most of the time, like all of these tools, electricians are using because we're trying to grip wire inside of stuff, or we're trying to like pry something inside of something else. So having something that's really slim line and has a long uh, nose to it, is really helpful, also has a cutting edge, so you could still cut this. If you notice all these things I just took out, they all have a cutting edge. So there's all there's some kind of sharp edge on every single one of these that you can cut wire with. So they're kind of multi-purpose, a lot of them are, but it's mainly because you're working with wire. So anything that you need to do with wire, um, you're gonna need to do, but definitely get needle nose pliers. Then there's kind of a specialty tool, which um, this is like a multi-tool. It's got a cutting edge, it's got strippers, but it also looks like a needle nose. It's got a slim tip. So instead of it being like this guy, just a different shape, you know, this is really skinny. This is actually wide, just like a set of needle nose would be. So you can still ream pipe with it. These are cleated out on the outside, so you can still ream. Um, still has bolt cutting options, which a normal needle nose doesn't have. So it's kind of like a multi-tool. I'm a huge fan of getting like three or four tools in one tool. Um, that way you have to carry less because this stuff gets really heavy, especially once you start putting couplings and fittings and staples and wire nuts and all kinds of stuff in here. You just get really, really weighted down fast. So trying to put multiple different tools in one is a good pro tip. Uh, next up, a level. This is specifically a magnetic level uh, for doing conduit. So, well, really anything metal. As electricians, we're constantly setting like new uh, panels, um, we're hanging light fixtures, we're putting metal pipe up, we're doing all kinds of stuff that having a magnet is really good. This has an extremely strong magnet on it, so this thing will stick to almost anything. You'll notice that it has a zero degree, which is just a horizontal bubble. It's got a 90 degree vertical. It's got a 45 and it's got a 30 degree. So uh, a lot of times you'll be putting this on conduit too. This, there's one side of this that's kind of rounded or dished. So that will sit on your, your conduit. So if you're bending conduit and say you wanted to get a 30 degree bend, you know that the 30 degree just needs to be straight up and down or to be sideways, whatever. But they give you all of these for different, uh, different angles that we use in electrical and we use 30 and 45 degrees quite frequently. So getting a level that you can work with conduit that is magnetic, that has multiple different bubbles is a really great idea. Next up, I would say a full assortment of screwdrivers. So one that I use all the time, I always keep a really, really large, I think this is probably like an 11 inch um, flathead screwdriver. I think it's probably three eighths, five sixteenths to three eighths on the end. You're gonna pry with this thing. Sometimes like the screws we deal with are flathead, but they'll be like really on there tight. And if you try to use like a smaller flathead, you'll actually end up damaging it and you'll end up like breaking the tip of it. So you want something super heavy duty to like really be able to drive. Sometimes I keep, this one's in a little bit rough shape. Like it's not sharp at the end anymore. I'll use this as a beater. I'll just like beat into wood or, or like stone or whatever I need to. And then I've got a good one that's got a, a fresh uh, tip on it that I don't, do that with. I actually keep it uh, really nice. Then these are multi-tools. So this is an 11 and a one, and this is a six and a one. So you don't need both of them, but I just like having them. This one's actually magnetic. Um, so every one of these attachments is magnetic, but as you pull it out, you have tons of different options. So we use square tipped um, nut drivers, square tip drivers. They call them Robbie's or Robertson's or squares. Um, Cause a lot of electrical devices have these little squares indented in them. So you can use this square tip to screw things in. It also has Phillips, it has flat, it has a 3 8 nut driver, has a 5 16 nut driver, has a quarter inch nut driver, it has all kinds of tools in one. So rather than you having like 16 handles sticking up here with all these different tools, um, you can combine everything and put it all into just a couple of tools and then anything that you need, you've just got it at your disposal. So I love having those. Another thing that we use all the time, you don't have to get these. This is kind of something if you just want to splurge a little bit. There's all kinds of different tipped um, miniature terminating screwdrivers. So we call these terminating screwdrivers, but you can see like this is a 1 16th, this is a 3 32nd. 
So they're just different tips. Some of them are really small. Some of them are, you know, a little bit bigger. They make them in Phillips, they make them in flat, but a lot of the like relays and controllers and things that we do inside of uh, boxes, usually in like commercial environments um, or low voltage equipment, will need really tiny screwdrivers like this. So having a set of terminating screwdrivers is a really, really good idea. Um, I don't use them often, but I, when I do need one, I have one right here. And I don't know, probably once a month or so, I'll probably need to use those. Next thing, you're gonna need a jab saw or a sheetrock knife or a drywall saw. Um, this is specifically just for cutting drywall. So if you're cutting in some new box and we've got drywall, you can you know, cut out. Um, and I like this because this one's like a really sturdy one. Sometimes you'll find them that are like really bendy. And as you're cutting, it's just like wobbling all over the place. This thing, I can get so much leverage behind. It's just got a thick stout handle, the blade's super thick. Um, just really happy with this one. So I would try to get one that's a little bit more stout if you can find it. You need to use the crap out of those. Next up, you need to have some kind of uh, way to test whether or not a wire is hot, whether there's current on it or not. This is a tick tracer. Some people call it a ticker. Some people call it a sniffer. You can hold this up to a wire and it will tell you if, uh, if that wire is hot or not. Um, this one has multiple different functions. So like this one, I actually has a laser pointer. I like that because I can sit and tell all my helpers like, yo, go over there and do that. And I don't have to walk anywhere. <laughs> but some of them have like flashlight settings. Some of them don't, have, you know, they just have the ticker. These things are kind of dangerous if you don't know how to use them though, um, because of how they work. Uh, so these require a little bit of training. So once you get out in the field, ask your journeyman like, what's the deal with these and how should we be using them? And, and when should you trust them? And when shouldn't you trust them? Because a lot of people don't use them correctly. Uh, next test equipment that you're gonna want is a plug tester or a receptacle tester. Um, this plugs into a receptacle. These lights will light up if the, the uh, receptacle has power, but also will show you on the front if, if there's different ways that these are lit up that uh, your receptacle could be wired reverse. Your, your hot could be on the neutral side, neutral could be on the hot side, your ground could be hooked up to the hot something. So all these lights will actually tell you something different depending on how it's hooked up. This one has a button and I highly recommend the ones that you get have a button as well because it tests GFCI circuits. So a lot of inspectors will go in once we finish a house and they'll go into a, a place where we're supposed to have a GFCI circuit and they'll plug in and they'll trip this to see if the, if the circuit trips somewhere. Um, so you need to be able to replicate that and test whether or not a GFCI circuit is working. So a GFCI plug tester is a really good thing to have. Then you need a multimeter. So this is a, uh, a really good like starter multimeter. It's got every function on it that you could want, but you're going to be testing for voltage. Um, you're going to be testing for amperage. You're going to be doing continuity tests to make sure that there's a complete loop from the meter all the way back to the meter on specific wires or equipment. Um, but there's a bunch of features on here. Like this one has Fahrenheit, you know, it has a uh, Hertz rating. It has uh, capacitance. There's all kinds of things that you probably won't use as an apprentice, but something that has voltage, amperage, and resistance or continuity is like all you need. The clamp ones are really awesome because you can clamp onto really big wire and see how much current is flowing through them. So I really like this style, uh, but definitely getting a multimeter. Uh, it's not essential. If you, if there's a tool in this whole list that you don't have to have on day one, a multimeter is it because you're going to need somebody to train you and actually show you how to use them and what settings do what, how to do all the little tips and tricks with these, but you will eventually have to have one. So, uh, if you can get one for, you know, that's not like hundreds of dollars, I recommend getting that. Next thing that you're going to want is a hammer and you want to get a hammer that has a flat blade on it. You don't want something that's really curved, that the claw is really curved. We use this for prying uh, all kinds of stuff. So the flatter it is, the more like behind something you can get to pry against it. Uh, plus sometimes you need to like dig in dirt or you need to like claw into something to tear with it. So just having a good flat surface, something that's got like a really big front end too. You don't want something that's got a super small face because then chances of you hitting a nail as you decrease the size of the face, obviously go down. There's two different types of like fronts. You can either get a waffled front like I have. This has a little bit more grip when you're hitting things. It's not gonna move or slide when you hit the surface of something so much. Um, but if you're not careful, this can damage wire really easily if you're putting staples on and you hit the wire. So a lot of people don't like using the waffling. They want something that's flat 
and just uh, smooth because then it's not going to damage wire so much if you do come in contact with it. But I tend to go with something that's like 22 ounces, 24 ounces. That's just the weight that I like and the leverage that I like. I don't like short hammers. I don't like anything that's 16 ounces because then I feel like I've got this tiny little thing and I can't get leverage. I want like 22, 24 ounces. So like baseball player, I can get a whole bunch of leverage behind my swings. Um, so lots of different brands. Stiletto makes really good ones that are, they look identical to this, but compared to any other hammer, they're actually lighter. So they look the same. They look just as cool. They function the exact same way. They just don't have the same kind of weight to them. Some people like the weight. They want to be able to like really wrench down and the weight allows you to do that. So it's just your preference on what kind of hammer you want. And then the last thing we should talk about some different kinds of bits. So for drills, you're going to need something like this. This has got a slide on it. You can put different tips in it. It just snaps in place. Um, but you probably a couple of these because you're gonna lose a few of them. Get some replacement tips. They bought, you can get full containers that Milwaukee makes where there's a whole bunch of different tips. And every time you lose one, just pull a new one out. But uh, definitely get some extra tips for yourself because if you lose this one thing, the next day you go to work, you can't use this tool at all. You know, you, so you want to have extras around you and these things are like five bucks. So um, another thing is getting a set of paddle bits. There's tons of different kinds. Um, some of them are just flat like this. Some of them are spiraled, but this is a spade, a spade bit or a, um, a paddle bit. Some people call them, uh, but there's tons of different sizes. This is a one inch. So you can usually get like a kit and they'll probably go from like inch and I quarter all the way down to like three sixteenths of an inch and in different sizes. So um, I would definitely get a full set of them. Some people, rather than getting a full set, they'll just get certain sizes and they'll get like five, three quarter inch ones. And then they'll get like five half inch ones. That's fine too. You're going to hit nails with these and you're going to like destroy them. So just understand this is something you're going to be replacing. Um, another blade, another bit that might be good to get. This is a masonry bit. So it's a very specific kind of drill bit and it's got a tip on it that is meant to go through concrete. So if you're drilling down on something like this, you wanna actually have the hammer setting on your drill uh, set for hammer drilling and you want a masonry bit that's specifically designed to drill through masonry. You don't wanna use like a steel uh, bit or you don't wanna use like a wood uh, drill bit, you wanna use a concrete bit. The other ones will burn up immediately. So this, when you have the hammer setting on, it actually bounces up and down while it rotates and it hammers and that's what you need when you're going through masonry. So you hear that, it actually goes through the masonry. So masonry bit would be a really good bit to have. And then the last bit I think everybody should have is a 5 16 nut driver for your drill. So 5 16 drill driver. You're gonna use these all the time a lot of what electricians deal with are 5 16 screws. So we'll either have wood screws that have a 5 16 hex head on them, um, or we'll have like self tappers, or we'll be putting panels up, or do all kinds of stuff that require a 5 16 head. So 5 16, you could even get a quarter inch one of these as well. You probably won't use it as often, but you will find that you do use them. So that is all I got for the tools I think you should get uh, as an apprentice electrician. Obviously, this is an investment, right? Where does this go? Um, it's an investment. So uh, as you see, like getting a, a full set of these is not gonna be cheap. You don't have to get every single one of them. I do think having most of these hand tools and these drivers and a drill, that is a good drill, like this Milwaukee drill, this best drill I've ever had in my life. This is such a stout drill. I drop this thing all of the time. It still keeps going. My batteries don't just like, wear down, they actually shut off. So it saves battery life, but like really quality, quality drill. It's going to be a lot more expensive. So you could start out with like a cheaper brand just to kind of get into something, but you got to know that you're going to be replacing it because you're going to be burning motors up. Whereas something that's really heavy duty, you're not. So definitely get a good drill. Definitely get all of the hand tools that I just talked about and definitely get the, uh, the screwdrivers and the tape measure and a hammer. Those like absolutely have to have, but all the rest of the stuff is stuff that you're gonna buy anyways. So if you can afford it, go for it. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.